Good morning. We will sing together from Sacred Songs and Solos, number 500, 500, SSNS 500, will be our first congregational song. You are welcome into this um, sanctuary where the Lord has been blessing. Welcome to the last Bible teaching for this camp 2017. We pray that the great God of heaven will revive us again, Amen. just as the choir have um, prayed in their rendition. And before that revive us medley, we had a string quartet. Now it's our turn to blend our voices, to sing together. You on the webcast, we are remembering you as well. You can as well join us in the singing. If you have your SSNS with you, as some of you normally do, you open to that. As we sing together hymn number 500, you are welcome to, to our Bible teaching this morning. We're going to have Brother Godwin to lead us, and um, we take the first verse together, the second verse, all our ladies, the third verse, all our gentlemen, then the fourth verse, all of us, we take that together, and it says, One is our master, the blessed redeemer. Strong is the bond that unites us in him. Brethren in Jesus, let us be faithful. Uh, let's sing that um, with that assurance in our hearts. 500, Brad Godwin. Spirit of kindled burn with the light that will never grow dim. Brethren in Jesus, let us be faithful, faithful to Him, always guiding our ways, true in allegiance and love and obedience, till in His glory, Hosanna. Wonderful fellowship 
the fellowship of the children of God. 506, SSNS 506 will be our next song. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. <clears throat> we'll take um, verses 1 and 3. Verses 1 and 3. song I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God through salvation down here below, we're going to be joined very soon Amen. with a larger family. Amen. 228, 228, the church's one foundation is Jesus Christ the Lord. And as it begins to go through all that, despite all she passes through, she's got a goal. She's got an end, she's got a name. And it finishes in verse 5 with a prayer. Oh, happy ones and holy. Lord, give us grace that we, like them, the meek and lowly, on high may dwell with thee. We're going to take all the verses through. Um, verse 1, everybody. Verse 2, let's have the children sing that. Verse 3, our ladies. Verse 4, the men. And then verse 5, everybody again. Am I clear? Okay.
Amen. As you remain standing, Brother Sean will come forward and lead us in prayer in French. Seigneur Jésus, nous te disons merci. Merci pour ton amour. Tu nous aimes tellement. Aujourd'hui, tu nous as encore donné la vie. C'est parce que tu nous as donné la vie que nous sommes là. Seigneur, merci. Accepte nos remerciements. Nous sommes déjà là pour te voir. Révèle-toi. Saint Jésus, révèle-toi. Touche nos cœurs. À travers les chants, touche nos cœurs. À travers la leçon, parle-nous. Nous voulons t'écouter. Jésus, ce matin, c'est la dernière étude biblique. Fais de merveilles. Jésus sauve, sanctifie, baptise, guérit. Exhorte toutes les prières pour qu'il y ait la joie dans le camp. Fais tout ceci pour ta gloire. Nous avons prié au nom puissant de Jésus. Amen. Once again, you are welcome to uh, last Bible teaching for this um, camp meeting convention. May the Lord bless each and every one of you for coming. We like to appreciate our internet audience as well. May the Lord bless you wherever you may be. We know that the Lord who has been blessing us here will certainly bless you too. Okay, we're going to um, open to SSNS number four, the God of Abraham praise. But before we sing that song, just to remind ourselves of the remainder of the um, activities that we have on our schedule. Um, this afternoon, Youth Choir and Orchestra on this platform here at 1.45 in preparation for the young people's um, meeting at 3 p.m. And then evening revival and evangelistic service back here at 7.30. Tomorrow, Saturday, general morning prayer. That's going to be the last one. I want to encourage you to be part of that. We decided to include in our morning prayer the um, daily morning devotion from our Portland headquarters. We have been listening to that and we continue to, to do so uh, just for a few minutes and then the conduction of the um, prayer um, continues from there. So join us if you have not been coming before. Perhaps you want to take advantage of the last um, um, morning prayer, which is tomorrow at 5.30. And then um, ordinance service will be at 10. Um, the revival, the last revival meeting will be at um, 7.30, as far as the activities go. Okay, the, um, just to remind you again, water baptism, we, as I have announced in, in the afternoon tomorrow, and if you have not registered yet and you have been saved from your life of sin, please report in the camp office where they're going to give you further information about all that you need to do and bring and get ready uh, before that um, um, ordinance service tomorrow um, afternoon. The restaurant help for today will be our brethren from Birmingham, Germany, and the New Yorkers, Birmingham, Germany, and um, our friends from New York will be the people um, helping at the restaurant um, this afternoon, and of course in the evening as well. I want to um, make an observation, which perhaps many of us have made already, and that really gladdens my heart. God used that to actually encourage me I was so thrilled when, as we marched in into this place this morning, the, the, the quiet, the, the, the serenity, the, it's like, um, we thank God for all the Bible teachings, and God assuring me that all those Bible teachings are having effect. We just heard about honoring God and where we are meeting with him, and as I enter this place this morning, I say, wow, so it can be uh, um, a place where we can just respect and um, treat like that. Certainly God is here. Yes. And he's going to, we heard that yesterday, didn't we? That if we honor him, he's going to honor us. Yes. 
and he's going to do that for each and every one of us today. God bless you for putting that into practice. And we want to pray that the Lord will help us to put all those other things that we've heard in all the teachings and in the sermon. God will help us to put all those into practice. Now, two minutes testimony. After we have taken um, this, songs of, this song of praise, uh, number four, the God of Abraham praise, let's take verses one, four, and five. Verses 1, 4, and 5. After that, we're going to have two minutes testimony. We do that for a bit. And then we have the first special, A Beautiful Life, which is a quartet. Um, then from there, we continue with the second part of the testimony with um, one of the quartet, or if we have more than one, that's fine. And then the testimony will continue before we have the last special, which is a solo uh, titled Searching. And then we have the Bible teaching from Brother B.C. from New York. God for giving me power over sin the past over 30 good years. Uh, before then, I, in my about 17 years, I was in a, a secondary school. I met a senior prefect. I saw her, she, she dressed in long, long dress, covered neck, natural hair. I would wake up, uh, fortunately, I was in the same dormitory with her. She would wake up early in the morning and pray. Uh, uh, what is, how can somebody deny herself sleep to get up and pray? Uh, it was like uh, something so strange to me. But you know, over 30 years, God brought me to apostolic faith. I prayed, I confessed my sins. He saved my soul. He sanctified me. He baptized me with the Holy Ghost and fire. He dropped wonderful thing in my soul, and that is his spirit. Do you know all those things, telling lies that I used to tell, all the bad things I used to do, a dressing short, uh, hey, how can I make my hair natural? Do you know? It just came out so natural. I did not struggle to get them. The Lord is good. I am only begging him that I am starting the journey, but I want to end the journey with him. I thank God for taking me to Portland. He gave me once again a smooth flight. I, I don't like flying in the air. 
He gave me a, a smooth flight. He gave me a good stay, and he brought me back safely. Yeah. Lastly, I want to say thank you to every one of you that greased my 60th birthday Amen. last month. Uh, with those good, beautiful gifts, I thank God for you and for your prayers. I want all of us to make heaven our home at last. I praise the Lord for the opportunity you have given to me to be born in a Christian home. I thank the Lord because my parents, they showed me how to be a Christian. They are not pseudo-Christian. It could have given me a leg to stand on. But I thank God, of almost 50 years ago, I was born in this gospel. I believe I'm a covenant child. Because any time I try to run away, the hand of God is on my life. I thank the Lord because he saved me. When I was very young, about 13 years old, in a camp meeting, but I was careless. And, but the Lord sought me again on my campus. My parents are not there. I was sick, and I know that I need to pray. So I, I, was, I went home, right in the sitting room, the Lord saved me again. He sanctified me in my brother's house. I went to Lagos, and at the Antonic Church on Sunday, he, he baptized me with the Holy Ghost. God has been with me. He's been my shield. I want to thank God because God can keep and can provide. There was a time, I want to testify to the power of God, that when we go through fire, it will be with us. My husband lost his job for three years, 2009 to 2012. It was hell on heart. But the Lord see us through. Through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus. I learned to lean on his holy word. We went to the government. There are benef state benefits from government. But because of my salary, we are not entitled to anything. They said my salary is above the threshold. We, now I know I need to lean on God. You know, God come in mightfully. I cannot praise him enough. I had a fall down my stairs. I la from the top, I land on the, on the floor. I get up a bit shocked, but my son said, he carried me up and said, oh, mom, mom, what's wrong? You know, God wants me to appreciate what he did. In A and he, the following day, a woman came, fell down, and he injured herself, and she died from brain hemorrhage. She was declared dead by the ambulance team. I thank the Lord. I praise him. I want to bless the name of God because he's been so faithful to me and my family. I want to thank him because when I look around me, I see his mighty great hand, most especially upon my life because I know I'm not worthy but I give him all the glory. When we came here on Wednesday, I was like, I want to give his testimony, but I want to challenge God first that I'm not going to testify until you touch me, until you re-anoint me again. And I give God the glory that he answered my prayer. Because he, he gave me a word. I remember when Lazarus, when Lazarus died, he said, uh, Martha said it's four days that he's been smelling. He cannot rose again. But... It's been four days late, but God is still there on time. So we may not be here on Friday, but we are here on Wednesday, and I've received abundant blessing. I give God the glory, and I pray I want to see him in glory, that he should continue keeping me and my family. Louer le Seigneur pour moi. Praise God for, for on my behalf. Quand je suis arrivé à cet évangile, on m'a dit d'aller devant et prier et chercher mon salut. J'ai prié, le Seigneur m'a sauvé. When I came, I was asked to go to the altar to pray for my salvation. Continué, I prayed, he saved me. J'ai continué, il m'a sanctifié, il m'a baptisé dans le Saint-Esprit. I continued, he sanctified me and baptized me with the Holy Spirit. j'ai décidé de travailler pour le Seigneur. Et, Ce qui m'a marqué quand j'ai commencé à travailler pour le Seigneur est que un jour j'étais en mission, je devais quitter mon centre pour aller sur une autre branche et je devais apporter les leçons et les, et les cantiques parce que nous, nous étions sur le dernier leçon. Alors je devais quitter, je devais parcourir 40 km. J'ai mis tous les leçons, les livres que l'on a sur ma moto derrière et j'allais. Après 30 km, le ciel était assombri, la pluie voudrait tomber. 
et la pluie était, était au top, on sentait la fraîcheur du vent. Automatiquement, ma moto s'est stoppée, ça s'est arrêté comme ça. Mais j'ai dit, Dieu, qu'est-ce qui se passe Qu'est-ce qui se passe, mon Dieu Qu'est-ce qui se passe, mon Dieu Pourquoi la moto s'est arrêtée Um, um, one day, I was, um, I had, load, I had um, the Sunday school books and other stuff on my, um, it's not bicycle, uh, motorcycle, yeah. And um, and uh, as I was, as I was about going, um, the, 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 it started raining and it was so much that um, at some point it just, the motorcycle just stopped. Alors, quand la, ma moto s'est arrêtée comme ça, je ne commence pas à me plaindre parce que si il pleuvait, les leçons, les livres, tout vont mouiller. Alors, il me restait 10 km pour aller sur mon, mon centre. Et mon dirigeant m'attendait. Alors, je suis resté là pendant 15 minutes. Je sentais la fraîcheur de la pluie. Après 15 minutes, j'ai démarré et la moto a pris. Et quand il s'est arrêté, quand le motorcycle s'est arrêté, je me suis arrêté parce que. They were waiting for me in my branch church, and um, I, I was so worried. I prayed, and then um, the, the motorcycle just started working again. Mais, mais après 15 minutes, quand j'ai continué, j'ai vu déjà la pluie était déjà tombée, l'eau était partout, et j'étais étonné. Et c'est là que Dieu m'a dit que si je t'ai, c'est moi qui t'ai arrêté là-bas pour que les leçons ne soient pas mouillées, pour que tu arrives à ton église. After 15, after 15 minutes, I saw that uh, the rains had falling and everywhere was just so wet that uh, God reminded me that he stopped, he actually was the one that stopped the motorcycle so that um, all those things wouldn't get spoiled. C'est un miracle dans ma vie. Louis le yes. Seigneur, je veux le servir jusqu'au bout. I will serve God till the end of my life. Yes. My soul, yes. I thank God he sanctified me. Yes. I thank God he baptized me with the Holy Ghost. He's a faithful God in my life. I thank him for my family. I thank him that I belong to God's family. Amen. And I'm looking forward to belong to God's family in heaven. Amen. One day. Amen. So... I want to thank God for sanctifying me. I want to thank God because earlier in May, I did my SATs, so I told God to help me. So last week, Friday, I got my results and I passed all of my SATs. It's God for, he's a God of deliverance. I want to thank him for saving my soul. I didn't want to come for the camp meeting, but I was encouraged by my mom. And I was telling God that God Almighty should come and help me. Um, two days ago, I was having slight headache. The side of my head was so bad, I could not even do anything. I was having this serious headache. I told God he has already saved me to come and help me to press forward. And I didn't know God was trying to get my attention. I could not do anything. When I got back after the evening service, I jumped on my bed. I could not sleep. I didn't know God was trying to get my attention as well. So I laid on my bed. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't do anything. Around 2 a.m., God now said to me, he called me by my English name. He said, Irene. He said, I know you, and I'm going to help you. Amen. And I said, God, thank God you know me. You're going to help me. So I said, praying. He said, don't worry. Everything you want, I'm going to give it to you. Amen. And I was thanking him, and I was thanking him, and he said one thing to me. He said, pour all your bodies upon me, and I will give you rest. So I just want to thank God for that promise, and I want to thank him for the salvation, and I want the children of God to pray for me, that God should help me put my feet in Christ to the end of my life. Thank you.
That uh, when I know Jesus, He saved my soul. He satisfied me. He baptized me at the Holy Ghost. <laughs> eh? I thank God that uh, there is power in the blood of Jesus. I call Jesus, He answered me. Eh? In, in my room, eh? I cry. Eh? And I hear a voice. Eh? He increased my faith. Thank Jesus. Thank God because God is so good. I thank God for say that He saved my soul. He sanctified me and He filled me with the Holy Spirit. I thank God because He has been helping me through this journey. I want to really thank God for a special thing that God has done for me. He has given me a wonderful husband. I cannot ask for anything else. He has been my friend. He has been everything to both of us. Sometimes when I'm down, God has used him to lift me up. It's over 20 years now God has been helping us on this race. I want to pray that God should help me and all my family so that we can see him face to face. Amen. I want to thank God for his faithfulness. At age 12, I met Christ. And I am about 50 now. I have no regret. God has been so faithful. When you hear uh, a product and something behind the scene, I am that product, and God is walking behind the scene. God has been so faithful. He has been everything to me. Uh, I don't even know where to start from. Is it when I'm sick, he heals me. Uh, he gave me a wonderful family. 
I remember when I came alone in 2010, I told the whole world that I had the most beautiful wife in the world. And they looked at me and wondered, who is that? I'm sure you must have seen her. You heard her testimony yesterday. She has been everything, not physical beauty, but inward beauty. When you talk of a partner, she is a partner indeed. When I'm down, she, God uses her to raise me up, spiritually, physically, otherwise, in every form. God has been so wonderful. Uh, and the children, uh, godly gift. What a wonderful gift God has given to me. God is wonderful. I have promised to serve him till the end of my life. Please pray for me. First, last Thursday, when I went to school. You will continue now. How many do we have standing? <laughs> I don't mean how many who want to stand. I mean those that were standing when I got here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we're going to give those six one, one minute, 60 seconds. 60 seconds, okay? Please, 60 seconds for those um, that have counted. And at the end of that, we have the last special before the Bible teaching. Because of last Thursday, when I went to school, that we were handing out our prefect roles and I got head prefect. I thank God this morning for the power and the blood of Jesus. I thank God that God gave me the privilege to be born into this gospel. You know, when I was younger than these, I prayed God save my soul. He sanctified me and baptized me with Holy Ghost and fire. I thank God for godly parents. They taught me that it can be sweet to trust the Lord. Either you are in the valley or you are on the mountain. And I thank God that that availed for me. You know, recently, you know, uh, I, I had issue with my academic work. I trusted God and God availed for me. You know, I couldn't have money to pay for my school fees. I prayed to God. God sorted it out for me. You know, about nine years ago, on this camp ground in Wales, I trusted God for a wife. God provided for me. You know, when we needed uh, finance, we had issues. God did it for us. Two years ago, we were trusting God for a child. Last year, God gave us Gabriel. You know, last year, I was there. I was sitting there. I told my wife that this year, I want to be on this platform. We trusted God. God did it for me. Apart from that, God provided a new viola for me. I want to trust God to the end of my life. May God help me. I thank God for the power and the blood of Jesus. Amen. Jesus has been my friend for many years now. He saved my soul, Amen. sanctified me, and baptized me with the Holy Ghost and Amen. fire. I thank him for taking care of me and my family. Amen. I thank God for the privilege to teach the children the way of God. And uh, we are praying that God will help everyone to line up so that we all can go to heaven. Amen. Special that God has done for me, there is, I have a well in my heart, which I call the heavenly orchestra. Amen. When I sleep, I wake up with sleep. I trust that God is going to help me. He's going to solve all those problems. Amen. And we'll be happy in the end. Help me to pray that I'll be faithful to him to the end. I want to thank God for healing me. I was sick when I went to London and I couldn't go to school for a few days. I was weak, so I want to thank God for healing me. Please pray for me so I won't ever happen again. I want to thank God this morning for this wonderful privilege God has given to me. I thank God for giving uh, a Christian uh, parent that actually raised me in the gospel. Even though I was born in this gospel, that did not take sin out of my life until one day I yielded to God and God saved my soul. He sanctified me and baptized me with the Holy Ghost and fire. Ever since then, God has been everything to me. He's been up and down. I've seen a lot of uh, trouble, but God has been seeing me through. Just like as my wife gave testimony about a few days ago, it's not be easy, but there's something I want to thank God for, that any time I have a problem, I go down on my knees and God solve the problem. I want to thank God particularly for the healing power in the blood of Jesus. 
Many other times I've been sick, but on these two occasions, about a few weeks ago, my wife was suddenly healed in the middle of the night, and I didn't even know where to go. I was about to, to call my pastor. The, the Spirit of God told me, put the phone down and go on your knees. And I was praying. God asked me to lay my hands on her, and immediately for the first time, God performed an instantaneous healing in my presence. God solved the problem, and the ache was gone. I thank God for everything. I want to pray with me that God will take you to heaven at last. I thank God for everything he's done for me. Because um, in the sports hall, I fell down and hit my face. And I hit my head and my mouth. But I thank God for healing me and not allowing me to go to the hospital. And I also thank God for um, um, last two nights, um, I knelt down and God saved my soul. Satisfy the soul. They say I want a pleasure that is real and will not mar a joy that lasts, a peace that will console. So they are searching. Seeking in vain, searching for pleasure or deliverance from pain. Since from either searching, dry your every tear. There's no need of searching.
seek through pleasure and deliverance from their hills to those whose hearts are thirsting for relief. We say the blood of Jesus brings the joy that ever thrills and peace is gained true fervent hearts believe if you are searching searching seeking in vain searching for pleasure or deliverance from pain since from topic of our teaching is Christian fellowship. I believe you would have noticed that from the songs that we sang. I'm going to read a few scriptures. Um, I'm going to start with 1st John chapter 1 Verses 1 to 7. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that, it, it, that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie right. and do not the truth. Right. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, yes, we have fellowship one with another right. and the blood of Jesus Christ's son cleanses us from all sin. Um, let's go to Amos, the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 3. It reads, can two walk together except they be agreed? That's the question we want to answer. And also, 1 Corinthians Chapter 10, verse 31. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, 
do all to the glory of God. Amen. That's the basis of Christian fellowship, doing all that we do to the glory of God. I know we always use the word fellowship around here. I'm fellowshipping. I'm fellowshipping. I remember one time we were in Portland. Our youngest son uh, came in and I asked him, where have you been? He said, Dad, I've been fellowshipping. <laughs> well, that sounded nice. But we want to look, first of all, this morning about the foundation of Christian fellowship. What is the foundation of Christian fellowship? In Amos we read, can two walk together except they be agreed? No. If two people were walking together, holding their hands, and one is going to the east and the other one is going to the west, what do you think will happen? There will be a problem. Somebody probably is going to fall down. Depending on who is stronger. So that's why there is need for agreement. But before we can even get to a place of agreement, something has to happen. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 tells us, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, Behold, all things are become new. You know, I want to declare to you this morning that fellowship, the idea of fellowshiping at all, began with God. God is the author of fellowship. You remember when he created man, he said it's not good for the man to be alone. I'm going to find a helpmate for him. The idea of two people coming together, that's fellowshipping. God does not, not only did he bring Adam and Eve together, God himself was there. It was God who will come down in the cool of the day and fellowship with them. There is some physical interaction there. Uh, There is some talking, discussing, maybe you know, enjoying something together. So, it's right to say that God was behind fellowshipping. So, but something happened that broke this fellowship. That tells us we have to be careful. Fellowship can be broken. Sin came in Through the deceit of the devil, Uh, we had some of that yesterday, and um, therefore, there was no longer agreement between Adam and God. You know, when God wants to fellowship with anyone, God is holy. So he demands that we be holy as well. So when this, uh, when Adam and Eve, when they did what God had told them not to do, instantaneously, that fellowship was broken. Right. There was no longer boldness for them to appear before God. That's what happens if we break our fellowship with God, if we stray into sin. But God can help us. Amen. To stay the course. The scripture that we just read said, if any man be in Christ is a new creature. Because of this broken relationship, God has to institute a way by which man can come back to him. 
Because God loves to fellowship with man. In the Old Testament, he brought in the blood sacrifice. He said, without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin. When, when the children of Egypt left, when the children of Israel left Egypt, he instituted the um, Passover. Uh, he said, "When I see the blood, yeah. I will pass over you." Yeah. And we understand that that blood that was shed that day, that animal that was killed that day, was pointing to one who is going to be the permanent sacrifice for all of us, and that is Jesus Christ. Yeah. When Jesus Christ came, died on the cross, he restored fellowship between man and God. If any man would take advantage of this shed blood of Jesus Christ, he can come back into fellowship with God. Come back into a relationship with God. That's why Paul said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. In 2 Corinthians also, chapter 6, verses 14 to 18, it says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship and righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion had light with darkness, and what concord has Christ with Belial, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them. And be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. That is the way to fellowship with God. Say, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. You know, the, 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 the title Christian Fellowship it suggests that there, there might be some other kind of fellowship as well. We don't want to be part of those fellowships. We want to be in fellowship with believers. People who have reconciled with God. People who have made their calling and election sure. Those are who the people we want to fellowship with. You cannot tell me you are in fellowship with God. And your intimate friends are unbelievers. The word of God declares to us, what fellowship? As God, as with unbelievers. He said, what conquered at Christ with Belial? Or what part had he that believed with an infidel? An infidel is someone who doesn't believe God. So if you have your problem, you take it to your, to your infidel friend. Guess what he's going to tell you? He's going to tell you what the devil puts in his heart. Not what God puts in his heart. So how can you fellowship with such a person? He said, show me your friend. I'll tell you who you are. We thank God we can take advantage. If we have not already taken advantage since the camp meeting started, of reconciling with God. Paul says somewhere, I beseech you, be ye reconciled with God. Not only is salvation one of the basis of uh, you know, uh, fellowshipping with God, in John 17, we read, John 17, Verse 14. 
I have given them thy word. That is Jesus speaking here. And the world hated them because they are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I sent have I also sent, sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Yeah. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also we shall believe on me through their word. Yeah. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Amen. Fellowship with God requires that we be holy. Yeah. You will see in, the, uh, in, the, in, in, the, in this uh, few verses that we just read that Jesus emphasized that we are not of the world. If you are born again, you are not of the world. And don't try to be a part of the world. If you try to be a part of the world, you destroy the fellowship that you have with God. This verse says in verse 21, it says that they all may be one. You know, fellowship requires companionship. It requires that we have mutual interest. How can you have companion with God or companionship with God without being holy? In one place in the Old Testament, God declared to the children of Israel, he said, be ye holy, even as I, your Lord, am holy. He said, for that cause, he has separated them from the world. He used the word severed. That's a sharp break. Anyone who dares to be in fellowship with God and with other believers needs to be holy. He yeah. says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Amen. You know, as believers, what's this experience of sanctification you know, uh, helps us along with is the need to um, not only submit one to another, but also to be in one accord. Oh, yes. Tell me a church that's not in, not in one accord. I'll tell you a church that is not sanctified. If we are sanctified as he is, he said we will be one, not only with the Father, but with ourselves. Amen. Also in the uh, book of uh, John, chapter 14. John chapter 14. Let's read a few verses there. 26 says, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and shall bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. In, uh, 
in the next chapter, verse uh, 15, chapter 15, verses 26 and 27, he said, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send to, unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me, and ye also shall be a witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. In chapter 16, verses 7, from verse 7, it reads, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for me that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment and of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more, of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you all things to come. He shall glorify me, and for all he shall receive of mine, and show me, show it unto you. Yeah. Here we see Jesus telling his disciples about the Holy Spirit. When Jesus was in the world, Jesus showed them everything. He told them everything, all that they need to know. But in order for God to accompany with us, he has to be in us. That's necessitated the need to send the Holy Spirit, uh, which we read in, uh, in, in the account in Acts chapter 2, that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And then the Spirit of God came as of a rushing mighty wind. If you want communion with God, you need the Holy Spirit. The Bible, uh, the, the word of God tells us here what he, he will do. He said he will remind us of all things. If you, know the, if you don't know the character of the one you are working with, it's difficult to please that person. It's difficult to know how to behave yourself. That's why God sent the Holy Spirit, that he might guide us. He said he will guide us into all truth. As believers, we have to be on the side of the truth. Anything that is untruth is not of God. In order to be of the truth, we need to have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. In, in the Old Testament, it declares that word, that yes, you are here, a word behind you, telling you, this is the way, walk ye in need. That function the Holy Spirit has come to fulfill. He's the one that tells us where to walk, where to go, how to please God, how not to displease him. So these three experiences, these three Christian experiences are the basis of fellowship, of Christian fellowship. We're talking about Christian fellowship, a fellowship of believers. And that fellowship will be nothing if God is, in, is, is not in it. God has to be in it. For God to be in it, we need to be saved. For God to be in it, we need to be sanctified. And we need to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I haven't said that much since my topic is not the foundational experiences. We already talked about that during this camp meeting. Um, I just want to highlight a few things that will promote Christian fellowship. We already said in Amos 3.3, that the two have to agree. 
John 17, again, I go back to John 17, 14, said, I have given them thy word, and the word has hated them, because they are not of the world. We already, you know, uh, emphasized on that, that as Christians, we need to be separate from uh, the world. Yeah. In verse 21, again, he says that they all may be one, as thou uh, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. As believers, we need to be uh, in one accord. It doesn't mean that we do not have different opinions. Sometimes we do. But the Bible enjoins us that we need to submit one to another. Yes. Especially for, to them that are rule, that have the rule over us. Okay? Yes, we can give our opinion. But we, we, we pray for the leader through the Spirit of God. To make the right decision. You know, sometimes there are disagreements in the church about what the color of the carpet should be or what the paint of the, on the wall should be. As believers, because we are sanctified, we are able to say, whatever it is, God take the glory out of it. Amen. This unity among believers the psalmist compared it to the anointing that comes upon uh, the high priest. In, this, in the book of Psalms, chapter 133, it says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down the beard. Even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garment as the dew of Hammon and as the dew that descended upon the mountain of Zion. For there the Lord commanded blessing, even life forevermore. Amen. If we want God to command his blessings on us, we need to dwell together in unity. First John, again, chapter 1, that we read earlier. Let's go back and read uh, the 6th and 7th verses of First John, chapter 1. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Jesus is the light of the world. If we walk according to the light, that's going to bring in fellowship. If you are walking in the light, I am walking in the light, everyone walking in the light, we all be on the same page. It says, in addition, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. It is important that we walk in all the light that God has brought, brought according, uh, across our path. Well, we are not concerned. So many people have issue with that church and this church and that other church that uh, they do this they do that and do the other thing why are we not doing but my question to you is that all that we have heard not only in this camp meeting since we came into the apostolic faith which of it do you have a problem with if you don't have a problem with any of it, 
why concern yourself about what they do over there and where they do over there and what they do over there? You do not have to concern yourself. We will be judged by the light that God shines across our path. If you do it because somebody else does it, that will not excuse you before God. God is going to ask you, you sat at such and such a meeting. The records are there. At one time during the Bible study, this brother or this sister brought the word. You had dust and dust and dust. So what's your excuse? I want to declare to you this morning that we should walk in the light. Amen. As Jesus is the light, we should walk in him. Amen. Do not concern yourself about what is going on out in the world. God is going to judge you by this, not by what others do. You leave the judgment to God. God is a righteous judge. He will judge righteously. Another way of uh, promoting Christian fellowship is to abide in the vine. In John chapter 15, we read this. John chapter 15, beginning from verse 1, I am the true vine, that is Jesus, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit be taken away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the words which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Abiding in Christ. That means doing all that he commands us to do. He says, not the hearer of the words alone, but the doers of the words shall be justified. If we don't abide in Jesus, that is, if we don't do all that he commands us, we are already not in fellowship. Because he says, if you don't abide in him, he's going to cut you off. May that not, that not be our Lord. In order to abide in him, we need to immerse ourselves in the word of God. We need to constantly commune with him. In addition to having our basic Christian experiences, they are going to help us to be able to abide in Jesus Christ. In um, 1 John chapter 3, 1 John chapter 3, verse 15 to 17, it reads, John First John chapter 3, verse 15. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer, yeah. and ye know, not, ye know that no murderer shall inherit, shall, no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, 
and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whosoever had this was good, and said his brother, have need, and shut it off his bowel of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him. It's so important for us to exhibit the love of God for Christian fellowship to continue. You know, uh, we, are described, we are described as uh, branches. Um, uh, in one place, it also uh, compares us to the human body, the hands, the legs, and the foot, how they each take care of one another. We as brothers and sisters, we take care of each other. One of the brothers was sick in, in the chalet that I was in, and uh, I saw the love of God exhibited right there. So many people, old and young, coming and trying to cheer him up, trying to uh, help him along to get over the problem that he has. That's how the body of Christ cares for itself. If we want true fellowship amongst us, we need to care for one another. We need to forgive one another. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus described a situation where you have a difference between you and your brother. And you, knowing that in your mind, come forward to the altar to pray. He tells us to leave our, our gifts at the altar, go back and be reconciled with your brother, and then come back and offer our prayers. Yeah. In other words, God will not hear our prayers if we do not forgive one another. Peter asked Jesus how many times. Jesus told him, I didn't say seven times, I said 70 times seven. That's a lot of times. Yeah. You must have no other business then. If you want to offend your brother 470 times, that's awfully difficult. In other words, Jesus is saying we should forgive at all times. Amen. That will promote forgive. Uh, uh, that will promote Christian fellowship. Um, in Hebrews chapter 13, verse one, he says, "Let brotherly love continue." Amen. He said, "Let brotherly love continue." He said. Because of brotherly love, he said uh, in verse 2, be not forgetful to ent entertain strangers, for hereby we have, en we have entertained angels on our wares. Not only must we uh, uh, take care of each other, those that come on into our midst, we want to uh, win them for Christ, yeah. we need also yeah. to embrace them. It's not that we like what they are doing, but we want them to see the love of Christ in us. Oh, yes. He said, by this all, shall all men know if you have, that ye are my disciples, if you have love one for another. Um, we can go on and on about what does constitute a, a, a Christian uh, fellowship or how Christian fellowship can be held. I just want to cite two examples of a Christian fellowship uh, when it hurts and when it, it uh, helps. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, um, I'm not going to read, but the, the, the point there was that in the church in Corinth, there was so much disagreement amongst them. One is saying, I'm, from, I'm for Brother Isaac, the other is saying, I'm for Brother Peter. One said I'm for Apollos, the other said I am, another group says I'm for uh, uh, Paul. Well, Paul was asking them the question, Christ was not crucified for you. Our focus has to be Christ. Yeah. In the church of God, we don't have camps. You notice that in our convention, we don't present platforms. Because their platforms are subject to changes. We present the word of God. Yes. The word of God is our platform. Yes. There is no need to 
uh, be in one camp or the other camp. We are all together. You see, that happens when we cater to the flesh. The flesh itself doesn't profit anything, the Bible says. But the, um, the, uh, the church in uh, uh, Berea, they, 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 and they, 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 they showed us an example that we need to follow. In uh, the book, book of Acts chapter 17, The book of Acts chapter 17, verses 10 and 11. It says, And the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. They were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word of God with all readiness of mind and sacked the scripture daily, whether those things were so. Fellowship is not just talking, discussing with one another. And by the way, what do we discuss? I read, we read somewhere earlier that whatever we do, we should do all in the name of Christ. And especially when we come to the church, of, to the church or to camp meeting, our focus, our discussions should be centered on the things of God. We don't come here to conduct our private businesses. That is not fellowship. You are not doing that unto God. We want to do everything that we do unto God. We want to search the scriptures. We want to come and pray with one another, for one another. Yeah. That is fellowshipping. Yeah. Yeah. We want to share the word of God. That is fellowshipping. Yeah. May God help us. Yeah. The brethren in Berea, they, 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 they did good. They said they were daily searching the scriptures. That should be our focus. Yeah. Our focus should be the coming of Jesus Christ. That's what we should discuss among themselves, ourselves. When is Jesus coming? My brother, my sister, we need to be ready. Yeah. He said, if we have those in, in, if we have this hope in ourselves, we purify ourselves, yeah. even as he is pure. Yeah. You know, discussing about uh, some football stars, or baseball, or soccer, or some people, especially the younger one, they can tell you all the bio, the statistics of each and every important prayer. That's not what we're here to discuss. We are here to talk about Jesus. That will promote fellowship. We are, we are here to be a tarry at the altars. That will promote fellowship. You know, catering to kind of things will not bring fellowship. I want to conclude this morning with the same scripture that uh, our superintendent general concluded yesterday. That's in Malachi chapter 3, verse 16. It says, They that fear the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that fear the Lord and that taught upon his name. Do you want a book of remembrance before God? Talk about the things of God. Discuss about the coming of the Jesus again. He said in that day, you will be God's. He said when he makes up his jewel, there is a greater fellowship coming. That is at the marriage supper of the Lamb. May God help us to be there.
Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word of life. Thank you for Christian fellowship, Lord. We've heard the words, Lord, from heaven, Lord. As we're on our knees, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you save our souls, sanctify, baptize the Holy Ghost on fire, put that sweet, sweet spirit within our hearts, Lord, that we may fellowship with the Father, fellowship with the Holy Spirit, fellowship with the Son, and have fellowship with one another. Thank you because you'll answer our prayers, for we pray in Jesus' name.